<laughs> I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving really is one of the best holidays. It's a holiday that's literally centered around being thankful for the gifts of your life. No presents, just family. But let's talk about real estate and what I think so many are going to be thankful for, especially leading into next year. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update, and we're going to talk about some relevant current data and special events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I am here to help. On the theme of Thanksgiving, it's safe to say that many should be thankful for all of those prayers. The prayers of lower interest rates, that is, because they've been ticking down for the last month or so and have unlocked a great deal of affordability for many home buyers. Now, while we should all be very thankful, I want to give a warning to all the would-be buyers out there. Those blessings, they come with consequences. It's, it's like the eyes are too big for your stomach syndrome. You stuff yourself at Thanksgiving dinner and pay for it later in the night and, well, the next day. But in the real estate world, the repercussions of lower rates will result in higher prices, lower probability of being able to do a home inspection or a home sale contingency in a much more difficult market for low down payment home buyers. Again, and by the way, if you're an investor who's looking for off market houses, then reach out as I would love to hear what your specific buy boxes are. We get off market opportunities each and every day. And I would just love to play a, well, a little game of matchmaking. And just as a heads up, these off market opportunities are cash or hard money only investments. There is no conventional financing allowed. Now, Let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. The fall inventory might have been a little slow to start, but it's in full effect now. There are 4,126 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This means that there are 12.8% fewer houses on the market today than just 28 days ago. As inventory fell by an additional 362 units this week. That's a big drop. Well, one that happens every Thanksgiving. Last year, that drop was 258 units, so this year was a little bit more severe. But the big thing to note is that inventory is going to start getting tighter and tighter. And as I've said time and time again, this all matters because the lower that inventory levels go now, then the more trouble it's going to spell for home buyers in the spring. That is a sharp dive. But it's consistent with the last two years. As I mentioned a couple moments ago, the 362 unit drop was a little more pronounced than the last year, which played into the numbers a bit. When we look at the inventory gap for 2023 versus 2022, then we now have 566 fewer houses on the market than the same time last year. And then when compared to 2021, the gap actually expanded a bit, where it grew to 916 units this week. That's a 26 unit increase this week. Saying in a more elegant way, Buyers today have 916 more houses to look at today than in 2021 and 566 fewer to look at when compared to the same time in 2022. And look at that chart. Look at how severe that drop is. And as you can tell from the year over year graph, the decrease in new listings is expected due to the Thanksgiving week. There were 305 single family homes that came on the market this week. We were 31 units or 9.2% short of last year's numbers with 336 single family houses came on the market. Now that four week rolling average is 801 units. From now until the end of the year, we won't really be worried about these four week rolling averages as the market does its seasonal slowdown and is a trailing indicator. Under agreements had a big drop as well. Again, it's to be expected. We had 577 homes go under agreement, which was 7.1% less than the same week last year when 621 single family homes went under agreement. This 7% fell below that 10 to 15% range that we've been consistently seeing for the last couple months. But at this point, let's call the stronger under agreement data an outlier due to the holiday week. But let's keep our eye on it because this could be interest rate decrease effect. In other words, this is the uptick in demand due to interest rates having fallen three quarters of a point in the last couple of weeks. Like I said, let's keep our eye on that specific data point. Now that four week rolling average is 813 units. So we were below the four week rolling average for under agreements as well, again, to be expected. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were off by 9.2% while under agreements were off by 7.1%. There were 307 single family homes that closed last week 
for an average sales price of $647,000 and a median sales price of $575,000. Sales levels compared to the same lease last year are actually down by 18%, as there are 374 single family homes that sold this week last year. Now, months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, then the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory fell to 1.54 months from last week's 1.61 months. Now, the 1.54 months this week is compared to the 1.81 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. But I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. The condo market jumped into the action this week as well with a big inventory drawdown. We have 2,360 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a 170 unit decrease from last week. Currently, there are 9.7% fewer condos on the market today than 28 days ago. The condo market continues to, well, thread the needle. This year's inventory levels continue to sit right between 2022 and 2021. We now have 145 more condos on the market today than at the same time in 2021, and 86 fewer condos for the buyers to look at when compared to the 2022 inventory levels. Now, as I said last week, our inventory levels in the condo market, well, can be chalked up to being pretty similar for the last three years. And new listings, well, they follow the same similar trend as well. There were 109 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 346 condos. It's just crazy. A little over 100 units listed in the entire state of Massachusetts. Condo new listings were 43 units or 28.3% off of last year's numbers, but 152 condos came on the market. Now, as expected, under agreements were down as well. This week, we put 215 under agreement. Uh, this 215 units was 53 units or 19.8% shy of last year's numbers when we put 268 condos under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average is 315 units. So 28.3% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 19.8% fewer condos. There are 116 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $603,000 and a median sales price of $465,000. This same week last year, there were 147 condos that sold, so sales levels were down by 21%. Months of inventory fell to 2.16 months from last week's 2.22 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels that we saw uh, this week last year, which were 2.3 months. Any chance you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So I appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. Continued improvement in the interest rate growth. Rates were down this week, with most buyers being in that low 7% range, and some buyers possibly being in the high 6% range. Now, as we've talked about before, we can thank the well, not-so-great economic news for the lower interest rates. File this under the, when you pray for rain, you got to deal with the mud scenario, because economically, well, it's not great out there. I mean, you feel it, right? I've spoken before about how the American dream is dying, and how more and more home ownership is becoming for the upper middle or high class. I really do think that trend is, well, it's going to continue to get worse as we see the continued hollowing out of the middle class. Home ownership is only going to be available for the more well-off, unfortunately, which is a darn shame as there's no better tool for long-term financial security than home ownership. While rents keep going up and up, my mortgage, it stays the same. While the dollar continues to get weaker and weaker, my locked-in mortgage payment actually begins to get more and more affordable. This is a luxury that I believe will sadly be enjoyed by fewer and fewer people. I had a person recently comment how they needed interest rates to either drop by 3% or home prices to go down by 25%. I think his sentiments are felt by a lot of people all over the country. But the issue is if interest rates go down by 3%, then home values, they're going to skyrocket. Take a look at this. U.S. home prices are up for the seventh straight month in September, led by Detroit. It says a lot when Detroit is leading the charge. Here's a chart with all the 20 metro cities that contribute to this data. Boston, it's in the middle of the pack, and that's exactly where we want to be, quite frankly. Speaking of which, I actually saw a video on YouTube last night. It was titled, Boston Mass is in Trouble. And it was some Maryland real estate agent that did the video. Well, I pulled the Boston year-to-date stats and found some really interesting data points. So be on the lookout for that video. It's coming out this Saturday. 
Is the Boston Mass real estate market in trouble? We're going to find out soon enough. I want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you are looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you. Just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about selling, well, we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. Also, should you know of anyone that is thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information, then we'll reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a comment in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.